Good morning all. Transmitter with humidity sensor, that's going in the shed. And receiver with little OLED display showing the humidity and temperature, that's going to stay here in the workshop. Now I've got them both connected to power banks because that's the most convenient power solution, but you've just seen that that one's switched off. And that's because this Arduino and display combination and indeed the Arduino with sensor combination with of course the transceivers just doesn't draw enough current to keep some power banks on. Now this one's a very primitive one which just has an on off switch and if you switch it on it stays on but that's only a single cell so that's not really going to power the transmitter for overnight sessions where I want to leave this in the shed and test this. So we need bigger power banks. Now, most of my bigger power banks do the same as this. They just shut off after a while because they're effectively not detecting enough current draw to stay on. But I did find two. Uh, this RAV power, which has the back. Oh, that's shut off again, which has a break in the back, which is quite nice because uh, it means you can see the cells inside. But this is only a five cell. I really wanted something a bit uh, longer lasting. But also found this EC technology, it's one with three outputs and this also seems to stay on with the amount of current that this is drawing. I'm going to measure that in a minute so we can see what the current draw of these things are. But I have a third solution and it's really quite interesting. It's this uh, Ozito power tool battery with this sort of top thing which has a couple of USBs on it. Now curiously, if you plug uh, the, well either of these, into the one amp output, that one, it stays on. It uh, determines that there's current being drawn and it stays on permanently. If you plug it in the 2.1 amp output, it shuts off after half a minute or so. So this is a bit of an oddity. So let's put the transmitter and the receiver on power banks that won't shut off. So this RAV power stays on. That's not reading anything at the moment because the transmitter's off. So I'll plug that into the one amp output, which is the one I know stays on. Now you have to press that switch. Transmitter comes on and we're transmitting data. What I'd like to do now is use this little measuring device to measure the current that the transmitter is drawing. So let's plug that in and plug this into the transmitter to make sure that zeroes out first. Okay, zero amps, plug that in. And the transmitter appears to be taking about 65 milliamps. Okay, now let's try the receiver. So I've put the transmitter on the RAV power, that should stay on. The receiver in here and that's much lower so this little sensor must take a lot of current uh, the receiver with its OLED which you'd think would take more wouldn't you um, is only drawing 45 milliamps or maybe it's the fact that uh, this transceiver is in transmit mode and this one is in receive mode maybe transmit mode well fairly obviously I think transmit mode would use more current. So 65 milliamps, 45 milliamps, but uh, neither of those is enough current to keep most of the bigger power banks on apart from the ones I found. So let's put this plug back into the 2 amp output and watch this thing time out and shut the transmitter off. You'll see that because the receiver will stall. So this unit is uh, this thing. It's a USB power station and it has one amp and 2.1 amp outputs and it says the one amp is suitable for your iPhone and the 2.1 amp is suitable for the iPad but in most cases you can draw a lot more than that and we'll do that on a power bank in a moment um, but on this one it actually seems that you uh, you've got two completely separate circuits here but let's just try this power bank for example which I don't know whether I can get that to focus on there it has actually, yeah. So this one says iPhone, Samsung, Tab, iPad, and then helpfully there's lots of information 
on the back, iPhone 1 amp max, Samsung tab 2 amp max, uh, iPad 2.4 amp max. Well, let's just try that with a 3 amp USB load. And I'm going to put it into the, well, let's start with the iPad, which says it can, no, it's going to be this way, which says it can take 2.4 amps. Well, actually, I'm able to draw 3 amps from that port. I don't know how long this thing will hang in there with 3 amps coming out. So then let's switch it to the Samsung Tab 1, which is only supposed to be able to supply, I think I pressed a button there, uh, 2 amps. And that seems really quite happy also supplying 3 amps. This fan hasn't come on yet because the yeah, the uh, heatsink is getting warm, but it's not warm enough. I think it's temperature triggered. So there's a button here and it's very easy to press it. So let's go down to the one amp max output. You can only draw one amp from this socket. No, nope, it's quite happy to supply three amps. Oh, and the fan has now started up. So in these power banks, generally speaking, these outputs are just paralleled up. It's the voltage has dropped a bit at three amps. That's not surprising. Um, so you can take any current from any one of these as long as it's not more than the max uh, that the whole unit is able to supply. So what does all this nonsense mean that you can only take one amp uh, from there and two amps from there and 2.4 from there? I think those were the numbers, weren't they? Well, it simply means that there's a resistor matrix across the two inner pins, the D plus D minus pins of each of these sockets. And this is for Apple devices. And this comes from years ago. Oh, that has switched off, hasn't it? Switch that back on. So that's the two amp output. Yeah, this is from years ago where it was telling the Apple device, you can draw up to one amp from this socket. You can draw up to 2.4 amps from this socket. But in actual fact, I can draw three amps from any one of these. So it's all a bit of a nonsense, really. But because the two amp one shuts off uh, because it doesn't see enough current being drawn and the one amp socket on this doesn't shut off it stays on it's quite happy with the hmm, what was it 65 milliamps that that thing's drawing this must have two completely separate circuits i wonder if it has different uh, cutoff thresholds or whether it cuts off at all yes i've got a second one of these actually so i'm quite tempted to test high currents and see whether these things cut out let's do that so I've wound the pot on this thing way back. Let's put it on the, oh no, which one is that? This is the one amp socket. So let's see if this thing has overload protection. Uh, that's interesting. It doesn't appear to be coming on at all. Let's wind this back even further. I wonder if that's because the voltage has dipped. Uh, yeah, so that's five volts at 0.9 amps. Yeah, that seems to have actually shut off. It hasn't, hasn't turned that light off, but that's interesting. We get close to one amp and the voltage completely falls away. This light is still on, interestingly. The backlash in this. Uh, oh, have I killed it? Nope, still seems to be fine. I just slid that off and connected it back on. So let's take that up to... Uh, oh, we need to go up to about one amp. And as we get close to one amp, yeah, that shuts down. That's really interesting. Okay, so at one amp, let's go to the two amp output, which should be able to give us two amps and wind this up. The voltage, is that dropping down a little bit? 1.7 amps, yeah, 4.9 now, 1.8. 1.9 amps and that shut down so these are actually current limited pretty much at the numbers that it says on here 1.0 amps and 2.1 amps really interesting there must be two separate circuits in this i think i'll open this up uh four torx 10 screws in here it's very compact there's not going to be a lot of space for electronics especially if there are two completely separate circuits in here Right, that's the screws out. This doesn't seem to want to come out, but if I press that button, 
I don't want to press it too hard because it's only a tactile switch. Hmm. Okay, the solution was to pull on these blades and that's out. And oh, there's a lot of stuff in there. Right, it seems these two blades are soldered to the board here. But it looks like if I push on that, that's coming out. Yeah. So we can have a look. Oh, there's even a regulator on the back there. Okay, let's get a bit closer on this PCB. On second thoughts, I think that might be a MOSFET. In fact, that might be the cutoff MOSFET, which cuts the power, because it appears to be uh, between one of these power connectors and other stuff. Now, here we've got the two USB outputs, and we've got different current sense resistors. This one's got a big R050, and this one's got three little resistors, which I can't actually read. Uh, R13, is that? No, I can't read it. It's too small. But uh, yeah, def definitely different current sense resistors. So I wonder if it's being used to measure overcurrent for the, the voltage shutdown, but also, of course, the same cu current measuring resistor will measure undercurrent. And when it can't see enough current being drawn, uh, it turns the unit off. But we definitely have two completely separate um, buck converters here. Of course, we're taking 18 volts on the input here down to five in each case. Um, but yeah, two totally separate circuits. Big diode there. I've got to try and work out which is the more powerful output. Let's have a look at the cover. Yeah, this is the 2.1 amps here. In fact, of course, we can see that from the bigger resistor, can't we? Uh, bigger diode on that one and uh, an XL Semi buck regulator chip. Smaller diode on this one. I think that's also an XL Semi buck regulator. Let's get in close. So on the high power circuit, it's got an XL Semi, looks like a 4201. And on the low power circuit, it's an XL Semi, you have to get the light on that one, uh, 4001. So how do those differ in terms of their current? What's this device here? That's, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if that's a microcontroller. There's a five volt regulator there as well, uh, F1104SMB. I'll look that one up as well. So the XL4001, which is driving the one amp output, um, has up to 40 volt input voltage range, while the power tool battery is 18. It has a two amp constant output current capability. Now it's probably tuned for one amp. So that's the 4001. And the XL4201 also has a 40 volt maximum input, but this has a maximum three amp switching current and they're driving this one at two amps. So they could have a one amp overhead on both of these. Uh, this says driving a 2.5 amp load with high efficiency. Why does it say 2.5 amp there and three amp there? But anyway, this is a more uh, current powerful buck converter. And the only reference to the F1104 SMB that I can find is on this page, hc360.com, Shenzhen Agriculture. Uh, I want to be able to scroll that, don't I? And it says it's an industry modern MCU. That doesn't look like it costs very much. And further down, it says it's a SOP8 MCU. So yes, I think that one is a microcontroller. Yeah, so these two uh, USB outputs are two genuinely entirely separate circuits using different controller chips with different capabilities. They have different overcurrent cutouts and consequently, I think, uh, different undercurrent switch offs. So that's a really interesting design. Uh, something else I've noticed is that this says Einhell. And of course, Einhell took over Ozito. And I don't think there are any new Ozito power tool designs, but of course you can still buy Einhell. So what were Einhell doing back in 2015? Interesting. So I think that's a really nice design. Slightly overkill in some ways to have a microcontroller to monitor currents, both over and under, and to look at what you're doing with this switch. But uh, yeah, that's a really nicely designed unit. Right, let's put it back together. And then I'll use this to power the transmitter, what will be in the shed. So let's put all this 
back together. Here's my receiver running on that power bank. Well, that'll do for indoors. And then the transmitter, let's put it on there if it'll stay there. Now that only works on the one amp output of this thing. Switch it on. Transmitter starts transmitting and the receiver is receiving. Good. So this power pack um, will drive the transmitter only temporarily because eventually, of course, I want to run the transmitter from a 12 volt car battery or actually a couple of uh, gel batteries because they're also going to drive the fan in my shed uh, in order to dehumidify it. Uh, did you not see the shed video? Well, then you're probably not subscribed to my second channel details below. Now, funny enough, I've just noticed that this thing says it's 72 watt hours. Well, that's the four amp hours times 18. This power bank, interestingly, claims it's 82 watt hours. Hmm. So these probably are higher capacity cells, but they've got a fair bit of grunt, haven't they? Now I'm a bit uh, not sure which one to use in the shed. The only other thing, of course, is that this is boosting up from 3.7 to 5 and this is bucking from 18 down to 5. Now, which is going to be more efficient? Interesting question. Cheerio.